In this video, I'm gonna show you the exact formula that I use to lay out every single homepage that I build. And I've got this dialed in to a T. So if you use this on your next project, you're gonna have more people signing up and buying than ever before. Let's dive in. Every web page that you build should have one thought in mind. How do we get users or site visitors to the place that we want them to be. So that's either signing up for a service, maybe buying a product, maybe signing up for a newsletter. So we start with the goal and then we work backwards from there. Thankfully, there's a real repeatable process that you can use every single time. I'm just gonna kind of lay it out real quickly here and then we'll go through each of these sections one by one so you can confidently build your own website. So we first start with the hero section. The hero section is the very first thing that people see when a page loads. It's the most important section because only about 20% of every user scrolls past it. So you can see an example here and one that's actually done really well. We've got a really clear header that's telling us exactly what we're getting. And then we've got a real motivating subheading. And then we finalize everything with a real clear call to action. So yes, the hero section is important, but you can't just neglect the rest of the page and hope that someone says yes. You gotta be real intentional and think through it step by step. So I'm gonna show you how to build out a full homepage section by section. You're also gonna get a Google Doc with ChatGBT prompts and a free show it landing page template to help you build your page fast. So stay till the end and I'll show you how to get those. Right after you're done with your hero section, you wanna do something I call the steaks section. And no, not steaks like you're gonna go have a nice steak meal, but what is at stake for the person visiting your website? So think about if they leave your site without saying yes, what happens, right? Do they maybe stay stuck where they are? Do they keep wasting time? Are they missing out? You wanna bring up different things that might be pain points in their lives or their business to try to convince them to stay interested. Now, this isn't about pushing really hard on your users because if you're too heavy handed, people can kind of feel manipulated and they'll just kind of check out but you do wanna help them imagine life if they don't take action with you. So make it real for them. Help them see that doing nothing actually has a cost. Let me give you a few examples and hopefully this can spark some ideas for your own website project. So this is a website called Franklin and Willow and I love what they've done here. They actually pose different statements that I'm assuming they've gotten from different clients that they've worked with. And so every brand you admire was once in your shoes. I don't have time to do this myself. I'm honestly embarrassed to share my website link. So they're pressing on certain pain points that they've had other customers tell them about. Here's another example. This is Lauren Rich Creative and I love what she's done here. Chances are your current brand and website can no longer keep up with you. So this makes it feel like, no, you're you're not the problem. It's your outdated website and I'm here to help. And I love the big, bold font choices where if I just glance at this, I instantly know what she's trying to say. All right, so once you've given the user what's at stake, it's time to start talking about the value that you have to offer. And this is what's commonly known as the value proposition. And really, in the value proposition, people are asking two questions. Number one, why should I spend money on this instead of something else? And then the second one is, why should I choose this over something just like it? And you really need to answer both of those questions in order to satisfy the value proposition section. But look at the difference between these two questions because there's a real key distinction that you need to be aware of. The first one is all about priorities, right? Like what's the priority in their life? And that's why we talk about the pain points that they have in the stake section before we even get to the value proposition section, because we wanna remind them, hey, this is actually a big deal for you and it should be a priority. But the second one is all about the key differentiators between you and all of your other competitors. So this is where if you're you're doing a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threat analysis, right? You start looking at what other people in your industry or maybe in your space are doing and you start thinking, 
What's my onlyness? What's the one thing about me that no one else can offer? Here's a structure that I like to use just to make sure I'm hitting all the things I wanna make sure I include in my value proposition section. You don't necessarily have to do these one right after the other, but it's good to just make sure that you're checking these off of the list. So first, you wanna really clearly state what you're offering. And this is where we talk about the features of the product or the service or what the client is actually getting. And you can do this through maybe bullet pointed lists. This could be small chunks of text that just kind of clearly state, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is what we have to offer. But you also want to make sure that you've got some kind of so that in there. And this is where we talk about why it matters. And, and this is how we get people to pay attention to this versus anything else that they could be buying right now. It kind of brings up the importance of the product that you're trying to sell to them. And then finally, the different how. So what makes this unique? Why are you the person that they should be buying from versus anybody else out there who is selling this product? So here's an example of a wedding videographer. So we say capturing your biggest moment so you can relive it forever, right? So we've got a real clear, so that statement in there that satisfies that guy. Instead of stiff scripted shots, you get a film that feels natural, real, and true to you. No awkward posing, just the real story beautifully told. So this is where we talk about how we're different, right? So you don't necessarily have to call other people out in this section and say, well, nobody else does this, but you talk a little bit about what makes you unique. So this videographer talks about how he makes his clients feel really comfortable in front of a camera. So not only do you get the wedding film, but you feel confident about what you're going to be looking like on the screen. So really clearly we're looking at the features of what he's selling. You get exactly these things. So nobody walks away going, huh, I wonder what happens if I pay, what am I going to get? And that's what you wanna tick off in the box right there. So once you've shown people what they're getting and why it matters, they still might be wondering if this is really going to work for them. So we've shown them value, but we haven't addressed anxiety. In our next section, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna to speak to the doubts and the hesitations that might be holding them back. And really the best way to do that is through social proof. You wanna show them that others have trusted you and gotten real results. So use things like testimonials or maybe online reviews, case studies, or big name logos that have either used your product or you've been featured on or you've worked with. There's actually this really cool tool called Badao. Yes, it's, it is what it sounds like, Badao, <laughs> that tells people when someone has purchased a product or, or sign up for something. So you can see that example here on the Penguin Designing website. You can see someone recently signed up for one of their must have resources for their business. So this really goes into the social animal psychology where people are much more likely to sign up for something when they know that somebody else has. But let's look at a few other examples. Here we've got just a massive wall of different testimonies from different folks. And this is something I've seen a lot lately, especially with like course creators. You'll see them take a lot of like screenshots of messages or comments in their social media platforms about how effective the product has been for whatever it is that they're doing. So having a lot of testimonies can really mean something, even if nobody actually spends the time to go through and read each of these. We'll probably skim through and maybe scan one or two, but the fact that there's 20, it's going to say a lot. And I love what Christina did here on the Buffalo Collective website. She actually highlighted the most important thing from this block of testimonial, right? So she 2 x her annual review. You gotta remember that people are just skimming your website. Nobody's gonna take the time to read every single word that you've put on there. So you gotta make sure that you call out different things that might be really important. So once you've addressed the anxiety or the elephant in the room, if you will, now it's time to up the ante a little bit because 
The thing you want to avoid is for someone to leave your website thinking, ah, maybe later, right? Maybe later usually means never. So what we want to do is help people make a decision to say yes or no. How do we do that? We add a little bit of urgency or a reason to act now instead of waiting. You can kind of do this through a few ways, right? You can offer limited time bonuses. You can have a countdown timer that's kind of pointing to people like, hey, this sale is going to end, or you can do special pricing. You don't necessarily have to discount your product. And that's something I hear a lot from business owners. Like they don't feel like they should discount the price because that kind of cheapens the product altogether. And that's totally understandable. Another thing that you could do is a special time offer where you say, okay, if you buy this product, you get a few added bonuses. So here's a few other examples. Like if you're a photographer, you could say that you get a free engagement shoot when you book by the end of the month. So urging people, book now so that you can get this extra bonus or there are limited spots available. I've seen this with web designers, with photographers, really any service-based business where they say, I'm not booking until July. So there's a little bit of scarcity there that people know if you want this, you've got to act soon. Or there could be like an early bird pricing that's going to be ending. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something that is more of a sales tactic. It could be evergreen, but you got to be a little creative. You just want to make sure that you're encouraging people to act now. Let's talk about a few examples. And this actually comes from that same Badao tool that I was mentioning before. This is a pop-up where if you enter your email and your name, you actually get 25% off of your first purchase. So this is really effective if you have like a retail store or you're selling physical products. I see this all the time where the first time I visit a website, hey, you look like a new user. If you give us your email, then you can get 10% off of your first purchase, right? It's encouraging me to act now. It's giving me a little bit of an incentive to buy within a certain time frame and it can be really effective. Here's another one from John and Erica on their Black Friday sale, right? Save up to 25 to 75% off of the entire shop, right? So just really clearly, hey, you could be getting a lot of bonuses, but you got to do it really quick because it's Black Friday and it only lasts for a certain amount of period. Okay, we've been through just about everything. We talked about the hero section, which is the first section people see when they hit our website. We've talked about what's at stake if they don't engage with us. We've given them value. We've addressed their anxiety and we've sprinkled in a little bit of urgency kind of all over the web page. But the final thing that we want to include and make sure we don't leave out is a CTA. And what does CTA mean? That stands for call to action. And really, a lot of times when we say call to action, we're referring to our buttons. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just the button. Oftentimes, I'll have CTA sections where I'm including a little bit of a motivational headline next to a button that is their next step. So. I like to have it probably about one every three sections on my website. So you don't necessarily have to go in order here where you're going from this to this to this and then this. No, you can bring a CTA in the middle of the stakes and the value section. And then you can have another one between the value and the anxieties. And you can also mix and match these different sections all along the web page. But if you only do just just five or six sections, you want to make sure that you include all of these. And that's it. That's the exact structure that I use with my clients and one that I know will work for you. If you want this exact structure in a Google Doc with ChatGBT prompts, as well as a free landing page template from Show It, there's going to be a link in the description to get just that. But it doesn't stop here. Building your landing page is just one step. You also need to design your website in a way that makes it easy for users to navigate and find what they're looking for. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to design your site to increase your sales. And the best news is you don't have to be a designer. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss when it comes out. We'll see you in the next video.